Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. How nice to be with you today. Come right on in. So glad to be here and glad you're there. And uh, thanks for everything you do. Thank you for contacting us. It means so much. We really feel that we are connected with you. And I think I got something from uh, a pastor in India last week. That's, that's exciting, isn't it? How the, all these, this technology can kind of bring us together. I'm excited today because I have a good friend who's been on the program many times, but she um, moved away. I haven't seen her for a while. A lot of you will remember Pat Layton. She had a great ministry in Tampa for quite a while at a woman's place and helped girls um, avoid abortion and bring their child into the world. And that's a, one of the greatest ministries ever. And she has been involved in that. And uh, so uh, she has a speaking ministry outside of television, of course. And we'll be talking about that. And also, I want her to quickly tell her story again. It's one it's a riveting story. In fact, it's uh, found in this book called Surrendering the Secret, and I want to tell you more about that in a minute. But I want to just tell all the camera people here and all those people that are audio and directing and all, stay where you're supposed to be until the show is over. Because when you see what we're going to fix, they might just come in right into the kitchen and knock Stephanie and me down and help themselves because we're fixing at this chocolate covered strawberry brownie bars oh wait till you see them the idea of chocolate with strawberries is just something special have you ever seen those like in Publix they're about that big and they're just covered in every kind of chocolate well this is similar so we'll show you how to fix those uh, but before I join her again let me tell you about surrendering the secret this is uh, it's just a a story that draws you in. I think once you start reading it, you're not going to be able to put it down. And it's by my guest, Pat Layton. And uh, for a donation of $20 to the ministry, we're going to send this to you. You can call our 800 number, 1-800-229-0059. Or you can um, write to me at Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And uh, we'll be glad to... Uh, get it out to you and I think you could find friends and ladies and relatives and all that could really benefit from this book so hope you'll take advantage of it and hello hello <laughs> oh. listen I went to the strawberry festival yesterday so I am all about the strawberries today so I'm so excited this is going to be good. Oh, and you said it was jam-packed. It was jam-packed. It, it's huge here. What's it going? A couple of weeks? Uh, two weeks, I think, yeah. But, I mean, there was there was nowhere to walk. Mm -hmm. There was nowhere. It was crazy. But I went to a concert, and it was great, so it was mm -hmm. worth it. And well, I got a Christmas present. This girl, yes. she, I'm not kidding, last year before Christmas, she had already bought a gift for this year. Only because it just happened. Well, let me tell way, you what I did Okay. this morning. Nobody's ever been any, done anything like this, I'm sure. When I leave the house in the morning, I have to say, do I have all this? Yes. And the three important things are my keys, yes. my appointment book, yes. and uh, phone. my phone. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't find the phone. I looked everywhere. I tore my purse up. I looked everywhere. And I thought, I have a landline, so I'll call it. And, oh, God, please didn't, don't let me have put the do not disturb on it, which I didn't. So I call that phone, and I hear it in the bedroom, and I can't see it anywhere. I had made the bed with that thing, oh. and it was under the sheet. <laughs> it's, That's funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, otherwise, have, I wouldn't have found it until Well, good tonight. thing you have a landline. It is a good thing I have a landline, and could, also I had to remake the bed because you never leave without your bed being made. True that's, story. That's the first commandment. That's funny. Thou so shalt not go. leave the house without thy bed made. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I always say take a dessert, take a meal, whatever, and just... Go up one notch, two yeah. notches. This is ten well, notches. That said, bam, yeah. bam, yeah. Yes. Kick it up another okay, notch. Okay, listen. Yeah. You, so we need you this. make brownies, okay? Just a simple brownie mix mm -hmm. with the water and the eggs and the oil, okay? That, and that's you bake it. And now it, we did aluminum foil for easy exit, okay? Mm -hmm. Now listen. We have a cup of heavy whipping cream that mm -hmm. we heated up in the microwave, mm -hmm. okay? I'm taking a ba bag of dark. You love dark chocolate, so I'm taking the whole bag. You don't even need the stove. 
You don't even need the stove mm -hmm. top. You put it in there and then you let it melt in there, mm -hmm. okay? And it takes like takes a little while. three to five minutes, mm -hmm. okay? But look at what you come up with. Okay, you need to do your job. Oh yeah. Please, and just cut some strawberries in half. Mm -hmm. You could, they call for halves. You could layer them. You could do whatever. Yeah, you want. I would probably. Well, no, wait till you see them because they're adorable halved, okay? And remember, cameraman, don't. Everyone, stay where you are. And I will ladies, be taking don't most rush of these up to my office. Don't no, rush the set. <laughs> Oh, but this is so simple, and I mean, it would really so make simple. an impression. So simple, and you are gonna, you're gonna look like you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's always fun to to, <coughs> to have something, and people are like, "Oh, I need mm -hmm. the recipe," and you're like, "Okay, are you ready for this?" Mm -hmm. Because it's regular brownies, strawberries. Isn't that chips. basically a, a ganache? Well, a ganache stays <coughs> wet, me. and this gets hardened. So this oh, is like, does it? like, you know, dark chocolate covered strawberries mm -hmm. on a brownie. I mean, come on. And you should have seen the line for the strawberry, chocolate covered strawberries at the strawberry festival yesterday. <coughs> well, uh, I wouldn't wait in any of them except I the, went one the time restroom line. And the crowd got to me, but yeah, I did, oh, that strawberry shortcake. Well, oh, I had goodness. a strawberry crepe, because I couldn't even wait long, and I, I wasn't waiting hours for strawberry shortcake, and that's how long the line was. So I got a strawberry crepe that was absolutely delicious. Okay, so, are you all right? Yeah. Okay, take the <coughs> strawberries, you pour the ganache over, we'll call mm. it ganache since you called yeah. it ganache, over the and top. And it's such a French sounding word. Oh, we sound very professional. Mm. And then you chill it for 30, I mean, 30 minutes, that's it. I mean, come on. Super oh. simple. So bring that beautiful plate over. Let's show the. Yes. Oh, so easy, y'all. It's Look boxed. at that. Look at those. You talk about a thing of beauty. Come on. We're going to be the most popular employees uh -huh. today. Not that Arthlene Ripley isn't always the most popular employee. Yeah, right. But today, extra special. There's a fork right there. It, it does need a fork. Yes. And mine. I'm not going to chew on that strawberry before I, I do an interview. Am. But as soon as the <laughs> interview's over, I'm over here. Oh, oh. so good. It's rigid. Well, it can't not be good. So I don't. We're only tasting it for our own self indulgence. Mm -hmm. Just that. Mm. She's having a moment. Just that, right there, is worth the recipe because that can be used for so many things. You could pour this over ice cream. Mm -hmm. You could pour this over any kind of cake. Mm. So if you just want. So <clears throat> It's got a long name. If you just want the brownies with the strawberries, we'll know what it is. And that's free. The way you can get it, that's all coming up on your screen right now. And I'm sure that Wanda's going to be busy sending these out. Yes. Stay with me. If you haven't met Pat Layton, you will love her, I promise. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I am so, so thankful and happy to be welcoming Pat Layton back to the program. It's been, how long have we known each other? A long time, over 30 years for mm -hmm. sure, yes, since and, I started um, in ministry here. Mm -hmm. And the, um, as the Lord usually does, he'll take those unpleasant places in mm -hmm. our life and turn them for good. Right. Only he can do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what this book is about. And remember, for a donation of $15, we'll send you Pat's book. Um, but because of new viewers and all, just... Mm -hmm. Give us a quick synopsis of, of your story. Um, well, it's kind of almost a little bit of the typical abortion choice story. I was a college student and um, at USF actually, and uh, had was very pro-choice, very brainwashed with the pro-choice agenda. And um, I had been raised in a Christian home, but it was not. I did not have a personal relationship with the Lord, so it wasn't. It was in my head, but not in my heart. And um, 
So when I went to college, I discovered I was pregnant with my husband now. We've been married 44 years, mm -hmm. which is a miracle in itself. Yes, it most is. marriages who, or most couples who go through an abortion experience do not survive mm -hmm. their relationship. <clears throat> but we, God had a different plan for us. But so we discovered we were pregnant in college. I was in college and I had, was our, already a single mom. So my, uh, I had a very determined heart for having my own business and being able to provide for myself. And uh, so I made a choice for abortion with really very little information and honestly, far too little thought. <laughs> it just seemed at that time I'd heard, you know, it's a woman's right to choose and all that. I also, back then, you didn't hear of full-term babies literally being killed. Right. No. And their body parts sold. Right. Uh, the message back then was it's just a clump of cells. Right, and that Nothing is exactly what I was told. Uh -huh. I mean, when I went to the doctor, those words are exactly as almost, I think, and it's they, still use, a baby, they use the word a puff, like a puff of cloud, oh, like a puff of something. That's almost a beautiful thing. <laughs> yes, it was, yeah. So um, definitely there's so much more knowledge now, and that that's one of the beauties of the pregnancy resource centers that I later founded mm -hmm. in Tampa mm -hmm. is the ultrasound and mm -hmm. allowing women to see the truth about the development of the unborn child as early as a pregnancy test is positive. Mm -hmm. So um, at that time I did not have that information of course and um, so I made a choice for abortion. I spent, very long story short, more details in the book, yes. but I spent seven years in self-destruction over that choice with nightmares and heartbreak and I actually had to have the abortion twice because I had an allergic reaction to the anesthesia that they used the first time. And I had to be put on a respirator and had to have the abortion again. Could have killed you. So all of that became um, just flooded into my brain about what they said is that during the emergency procedure they had left parts of the fetus behind and I had to have the abortion again. So as a young college student, that was the first time I'd ever thought of a baby. And so I began to have nightmares about baby parts and wondering if it was a boy baby <clears throat> or a girl baby. I thought if I remembered your story that kind of everything was at loose ends, falling apart and all, and you didn't right away connect it to the abortion. No, no. no. And it's a miracle your mm -hmm. marriage survived. Right. Uh, we went on to get married. We spent seven years hating one another and never knowing why. Um, I never because asked it was a him, joint decision, wasn't it? Well, not so much, honestly. Um, as the years went on, he began to take more responsibility of just not stepping up to the plate or not telling me. But I pretty much made the decision because I had already been through abandonment in my first marriage, mm -hmm. and I was left with a little baby boy, and so I uh, did not give him a choice. But as we've learned in years, as the years have gone by. He also, he did have a choice. He, I was in love. He was in the relationship. So now he knows that if he'd have, you know, made an effort yes. to let me know that he was not going to leave, that he would be there. So we've gone through a lot of healing in our marriage. But we went on to get married. We spent seven years basically in just trauma over that abortion. And uh, until finally I surrendered my life to the Lord. I, I as a last resort, started going to church and um, found the Lord and found out, you know, his redeeming love and healing love and forgiveness. Um, yeah. Um, in your ministries, have you discovered other gals like you that they're, they had the abortion, they listened to everything. Yes. That, yes. And they had similar experiences mm -hmm. that nothing would go right, but they, they didn't put, yes. Didn't put thousands together. upon thousands. Really? It was actually a recent study. World Magazine just contacted me recently about a study that came out saying that they had interviewed like 600 women. Now we've had 60 million abortions, right? <laughs> so, but they interviewed 600 women within five years of their abortion experience and they were claiming that there was no trauma. But most women go through that many years of just denial mm -hmm. of continuing to convince themselves I did the only thing I could. So it's no, normally in later years, after you've had a child or, you know, as years have gone on, that the trauma of the abortion really, you realize how many areas of your life have been affected by that abortion. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, yeah, yes, it's very common for women to go many years holding on to denial and just trying to ignore it. And only God knows how many babies have been saved because 
of your story through yeah. the years. And uh, you're out doing a lot of speaking and so forth, and uh, you are coming to Tampa Bay area mm -hmm. uh, March the 20th. I will get this on our community calendar. And uh, it's going to be at Grace Family Church in Lutz, mm -hmm. which is really part of Tampa. Right, Tampa, right. And um, great church. Mm -hmm. It really They're is. They're amazing. So, yeah. Yes, we just had a women's conference with close to 1,500 women this weekend, and they all heard about this conference. And mm -hmm. we're having Abby Johnson, who's the star, well, not star, but the story behind Unplanned. Mm -hmm. And Abby is a powerful speaker. We're also launching our men's ministry at that event. We've just um, published a book called Healing the Heart of a Father mm -hmm. um, that addresses the heartbreak that's of abortion the, That's the men. person that's always left out. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And there, there are, I'm, I believe, millions of men that didn't yes. want this to happen. Right. And they, they grieve. Right. Well, they're the ones that caused us to write the book mm -hmm. because so many men and couples, mm -hmm. what we've discovered is that God has protected the marriage of many couples. I just spoke to a pastor's wife this weekend that she and her pastor husband had multiple abortions together in their mm -hmm. youth and now they're serving God in pastoring and um, so yeah there's many men that have been silenced or not really acknowledged mm -hmm. in the abortion experience and they're calling out for help. Now I'd like to fast forward to what it's like now because um, we've all most of your friends and my friends, we've been to Operation Rescue and, mm -hmm. and things to uh, try to stop abortion. It's a whole different thing. As I see it today, it's a political football. Mm -hmm. And um, it probably won't be abolished all at once, but they keep, you know, yes. just chipping away at yeah. it. And Well, truth is chipping away at it. Yes. Women are hearing the truth. They're learning about the unborn child. They're learning about the after effects of an abortion, the trauma. They're not buying the lie anymore. Mm -hmm. And we're in a presidential <coughs> election right now where uh, on one side, which has a lot of <coughs> candidates, mm -hmm. the, the Democrat side, right. every single one of them right. will validate a mm -hmm. full-term mm -hmm. abortion. That baby right. can be laying right there kicking. Right. And it mm -hmm. can be killed. Right. So uh, this mm -hmm. is something that uh, I've watched it through the years, and it's gone from this emotional thing to a political thing mm -hmm. however we can handle it's fine right but just today this just came out from my printer today upstairs um, the ACLJ which uh, Jay Seculo is the right. head of it and he's fighting abortion all the time and he argues before the Supreme Court quite <coughs> regularly mm -hmm. uh, said that uh, Planned Parenthood's going to lose a lot of money because President Trump has been successful mm -hmm. in defunding it now Mm -hmm. I'd like to just throw a hissy fit of why would any of my tax mm -hmm. dollars go to Planned Parenthood? Right. Well, that's, that's insane. Right. Well, and it's not, we, you know, we are not hearing all sides of the story. Mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood's receiving a lot of funding under a lot of false pretense mm -hmm. of the things that they offer women mm -hmm. when the majority of what they're doing is offering abortions that's but exactly, no alternatives. Right, that's exactly what... No other options for yes. women, just abortions. Mm -hmm. So... You know. And so what's so interesting <clears throat> about this is what has happened is because President Trump, he gets to choose judges. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. some presidents don't even cover all of it. Right. He's gotten busy and, mm -hmm. and uh, replaced mm -hmm. so many judges, right. and they are pro-life judges. Right. So it's... it's making a difference. Yes, a it's big going difference. our way. Right, and I think that's really why Surrendering the Secret, last year we had 40,000 website hits at surrenderingthesecret.com. So the awareness that of women to the truth about abortion and mm -hmm. the trauma of abortion, the laws that are being affected, the discussions that are happening, the movies that are being made, those things are bringing the truth out and bringing mm -hmm. out the voice of women to understand that we can be, like we call ourselves pro-woman, pro-life, mm -hmm. pro-love. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so. And uh, her <clears throat> website is on the screen. And uh, so we're talking fast, <laughs> getting a lot of subjects. We always in. do. But you can go, you can go to that and uh, find out more about this book. 
-hmm. What a great name, Surrendering, Surrendering the, the Secret. Secret. Well, Lifeway just, that book is actually, uh, it was originally pu published 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's a brand new book that Lifeway just released last year. Mm -hmm. And the reason they redid it and rebranded it is because we're, we're reaching so many women. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible says the truth will set you free. That's right. And uh, abortion is the biggest lie. Mm -hmm. Right. In this nation. Right. And James 5, 16 says, confess your sins to one another and you'll be healed. Mm -hmm. So our goal is for to reach healing and restoration so that women are able to tell their children and grandchildren the truth. Yeah. What are some, some of the stories that come to you? I bet there's so many, there's no way you could have written them down. But mm -hmm. I, I should feel that when you give a message... Mm -hmm. that these girls feel mm -hmm. they, okay, I can talk to her. Mm -hmm. Well, I just had one come, yeah, I mean, obviously this weekend with 1,500 women, mm -hmm. I had woman after woman, story after story. Mm -hmm. But the, it's just really neat to see what God, like I had one particular woman who was set free from her abortion. She spent so many years as a Christian living basically in silence in the church mm -hmm. because often the church has two different perspectives, they either come down really hard on abortion, mm -hmm. which makes women kind of slither away, mm -hmm. or they don't want to touch the subject at all. Mm -hmm. So we're losing a lot of the women and the, the gifts and talents that are in the church. So this woman had been one of those where she had been very silent until she went through her healing journey, and now she's t a Bible teacher mm -hmm. and a profound, passionate, Bible teacher who was afraid to stand up before mm -hmm. because she felt like abortion is really the unpardonable sin. Yeah, the unforgivable. Right, one, yeah. right. So it to set women free, like you said, sets us free to tell truth to our family and our children in the communities to vote right or to vote pro-life. Mm -hmm. And um, it just is, has a whole ripple effect, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I think the, the choices out there have never been more clear. Yeah. It's, it's not really this political party or this right. one. It's, it's evil. Right. Well, you can't run yeah. from watching a video of an, uh, of an unborn baby shrinking away from an abortionist. Mm -hmm. to, um, you know, you can't lie about that anymore. Mm -hmm. So there's so much. It, the truth is coming out in so many different ways. I have read <clears> things <throat> that I wish I hadn't. Yeah. You know, they'll pop up on the internet, and they're right. they're true. They're yes. true. Yeah. Uh, things that go on in abortion clinics. Yeah. Right. And um, that's what I love about Abby's story. Actually, mm -hmm. when she comes to Tampa, she really shares the truth right from the, you know, from the back room mm -hmm. of experiencing how it how it is there. And she is going to be uh, sharing this with you. She'll be the keynote speaker, March the twentieth. Mm -hmm. um, and so. And as I mentioned, we'll put this on our community calendar and air it for a while, but um, to any ladies out there in the Tampa Bay area, uh, just mark down the date of March the 20th and Grace Family Church is a well, wonderful it's, it's church. It's for men and women. Both? Yes, we're mm -hmm. going to be launching our man's book, our big book for men. Mm -hmm. Abby's a wonderful speaker to both men and women. And actually, I've been telling people, anyone over 18, if you have a, a young adult uh, son or daughter, this is Absolutely. a great time for yeah. them to come hear truth from someone as articulate as Abby mm -hmm. and just facts and truth uh, to help them with the argument that mm -hmm. they're, they're facing in the culture of, you know, public schools and different, so mm -hmm. they need to be equipped to share. They need you know. to be equipped. Mm -hmm. They need to know so the I'm truth. So I'm encouraging parents to and bring their... Um, Abby Johnson, uh, was it last year that the movie Unplanned yes. came out? Mm -hmm. Same time as our new book. So mm -hmm. that's why 40,000 people came to our website for help. And that was a wonderful it's movie. True. It's so right. well done. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is the lady and she, mm -hmm. is it if I remember right, she did she own an abortion? She, she worked for Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. She was recruited out of college and was a proficient seller of abortions mm -hmm. through Planned Parenthood until she experienced a live abortion in the room. Yes, it, it, if I remember right, it was kind of interesting because she'd worked there quite a while, but mm -hmm. she'd never really seen one. Right, and she, she was called in at the was... last minute mm -hmm. for to assist a physician. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and she saw the abortion, ha she saw it on the ultrasound, she saw the baby, she saw the procedure. Um, so she was just 
awakened mm -hmm. to what was really happening. She had chosen to live in, just in denial all that time, and which most do. I have sat with a woman who runs an abortion clinic for lunch, and her telling me how she part of her job was to connect baby parts Ooh. on a side table. And she told me with a straight, sin sincere face, uh, with the feeling that she was helping women to be sure that all the baby parts were collected and that none were left behind like what I had done. Um, so she was very convinced that she was doing the right thing for women. Uh, it's a darkness. Yeah, what was, what was your conversation like? How it did was, it end? I, it was very early in my journey with this. Uh -huh. So I was stunned. And it really, uh, God showed me so early on, this is how blind this is. You're this right. is the darkness that we're facing. Um, she really feels that she's doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So it was really powerful. Yes, yeah, so... The she Bible has since about, left the abortion industry, yeah. though. I don't see how they could stay in it very <laughs> yeah, long she if left they're soon after. in the hands-on mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is the lie, that they're helping women. Right. And then you have people, as I read, like um, mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey, to mm -hmm. shout your abortion like, Whoop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a lie. Yeah. And it's you, just you don't want to do anything in your life that's going to just slow it down and you won't go anywhere. Right. Um, yeah. you, I don't think you'll ever regret choosing life. Right. Our goal really in Surrendering the Secret is just to help women, you know, um, just be restored and healed mm -hmm. and see God's love and hand on every part of their lives mm -hmm. and understand how just like with my abortion, He uses it all for, for good mm -hmm. when we surrender mm -hmm. it and when we allow Him to use our story. Mm -hmm. You know, Revelation twelve eleven, we overcome the enemy through the blood of the Lamb, blood of Jesus and the word of word our testimony, testimony yeah. is the most powerful thing just to be able to share what we've experienced and what God's done for us and that's our goal with this healing journey. Yeah, and probably... Pat and I have been talking to a lot of women who've had abortions mm -hmm. and what we want you to know is God forgives mm -hmm. and restores mm -hmm. and can give you uh, a new life free, mm -hmm. just free from any mm -hmm. of the regret and pain and sorrow right. that he can do that. Mm -hmm. And um, so I hope that if you've heard things here today that have just kind of just been in your face wake up um, so we go off the air why don't you just kneel down talk to Jesus just like I'm talking to you he wants to restore you he's God he's God he loves you he wants you he wants you in his kingdom he wants you in his family and you can talk to him just as like Pat and I have been conversing and then I hope you could find your way to a really fine Bible teaching church and on the Tampa Bay area, right down March the 20th at uh, Family Church in uh, Tampa. Great to have you again. Join me next time remembering no higher calling than that of home keeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 